Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy. I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are your go-to resource for all things nutrition and uh, nutrition and health. 844-236-6010 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, the health issue you or a loved one may be dealing with, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we welcome your phone calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010 is our phone number. If you have a comment or success story, we love hearing from you, 844-236-6010 is our number today and every day on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, you can call the bright side Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Ask them about joining the bright side Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a longevity business, work out of your home. If you're an entrepreneur or entrepreneurially minded, if you like the entrepreneur lifestyle, if you like working out of your home, if you like working in your pajamas or your underwear, if you like earning your own earning tax benefits associated with having your own business, earning thank you checks. Be an, if you want to be an entrepreneur, the longevity business is something that you want to look into. Call 866-735-2470 for more information. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com for a one-time $25 fee. You can be in the health business and earn all the thank you checks associated with spreading the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. Go to criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, or brightsideben.com. Of course, you can purchase Longevity products off the websites as well. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com, including our retinol 5% gel made with the highest amount of retinol you're going to find anywhere. It also includes a big dose of vitamin C, fat-soluble, premium, stabilized vitamin C, never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want ever in any of our Truth Skin Health products. They're all up at truthtreatments.com. Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Transdermal C Serum as well. Voted one of the top 150 products in the world by Harper's Bazaar Magazine. Truthtreatments.com. All our products are up at truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. We're still talking about heart health, cardiovascular health, the relationship between what we call coherence or the smooth flow of energy from the heart to all of the cells and all of the structures and all of the tissues of the body. The uh, last program, we talked about an interesting relationship between coherence in the body and music. We said that coherence can be thought of as beautiful music, smooth, pleasant music, and incoherence can be thought of as jarring or angry music. In fact, what makes music beautiful and and easy to listen to is coherence. Music is about vibration, frequency, and so is the rhythm of the heart and the rhythm of the body. And this idea of rhythm and frequency is really what what vibration is about. We called it oscillation. Oscillation is like a back and forth movement, sort of like a metronome. 
Everything in the body oscillates. Everything that's alive oscillates. Everything in the universe oscillates. Even non-living things oscillate. Rocks oscillate at their molecular level because the molecules themselves have an oscillating nature. The atoms that make up the molecules have an oscillating nature. In fact, everything that is part of our universe, living or not living, everything that is so-called real has a frequency or an oscillating nature. This is something the ancient Egyptians talked about. Everything vibrates. Vibration is a function, a, a, a fundamental aspect of reality. Everything is in essence, not, not only everything has a frequency, everything is a frequency, which is simply a measurement of how fast something is going back and forth, how fast something is oscillating. A frequency is a measurement of how fast something goes from point A to point B, back to point B, back to point A, back to point B, back and forth and back and forth. Radio stations vibrate at a frequency. Radio waves, I should say, vibrate at a frequency, and radio stations were, are, are licensed by the FDA to send out information at that specific frequency. That's what we call a channel. A channel is a frequency. Simply put, in terms of biology, in terms of health, when living systems are operating as they should, they are vibrating at the correct rate. At the, uh, they're oscillating at the correct rate. They have the, the correct frequency. There's frequencies of health and there's frequencies of disease. When we say a system, a biological system is disease, what we're really saying is it's out of frequency. It's incoherent in terms of its frequency. It's net frequency and all the little sub-frequencies made up of all the cells and the tissues and the organs. There's a guy named Dr. Leonard Horowitz, absolutely brilliant medical researcher. I think he's a dentist. He's a consumer advocate and researcher. Harvard graduate, longtime critic of the pharmaceutical model of healing, longtime critic of the medical model as we are here. He's an accomplished author. He's written over 15 books on the idea of health and frequency. He says that human beings are frequency beings, in essence, quote, crystallizations of divine frequency vibrations, unquote. And this is the, the frequency idea, the vibration idea that I talk about all the time when I talk about divine energy. Divine frequency, uh, uh, divine frequency vibrations crystallize, they solidify, and they form us. They form human beings. They form all of our cells. They form all of our tissues. They form all of our structures. They form the body. And if you think this is airy-fairy, it's not. It's quite literally the basis of theoretical physics, which in turn is the basis of biology, which in turn is the basis of health and wellness. It's not airy-fairy. All of physics is about vibration. Physics starts with mathematics, and then mathematics turns into physics when it moves, when it vibrates. Mathematics becomes, vi mathematics becomes physics when it vibrates. Physics is about vibration, and biology is about vibration, and cells and tissues and organs and structures are all about vibration. How well they function are all vibration phenomena. When they're functioning correctly, they're functioning, they're vibrating at the correct frequency. And in a sense, nutrition, which I'm an absolute lover of, the mighty 90 essential nutrients, they're also about frequency and oscillation. Vitamin C has a frequency. Vitamin E has a frequency. Selenium has a frequency. Iodine has a frequency. Essential fatty acids have a frequency. You can think of the mighty 90 essential nutrients as little frequency modulators or tuning forks. And they support the correct frequencies of cells. That's how they work. We don't talk about it. We talk about the chemistry aspect, but from a, a more fundamental physics aspect, nutrients, the mighty 90 essential nutrients work because of frequency. If you have a tuning fork and you hit that tuning fork, it will not only cause a secondary tuning fork, a, a second tuning fork, to vibrate automatically. In other words, you hit one tuning fork, the second one will vibrate even if you need to hit it. It will just vibrate as a part of something called resonance. And don't even ask what that is, but it's there. You hit a tuning fork, a second tuning fork is going to vibrate without you even hitting it. That's called resonance, or it's actually called entrainment. And you know what else? When you hit a tuning fork, it's not just the other tuning fork that's going to vibrate. Anything else that has the same fundamental frequency will vibrate. The strings of a piano or the strings of a violin or a guitar will vibrate as well. They'll vibrate or they'll entrain at the same frequency. Entrainment is when one frequency overrides another frequency and that second one matches up with the first one. That's called entrainment. Vitamins and minerals and essential fatty acids, essential amino acids, these are all like molecular tuning forks that induce cells, ultimately organs, and tissues and structures in the body, including the heart, to vibrate at those frequencies. And guess what? Your thoughts have frequencies too. And your emotions have frequencies. And all of these function as entrainment devices that entrain the body into health or the lack thereof. 
All right, I'm Farms. This is Benny, 442 Okay, we are back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. I'm sorry, benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. You can purchase longevity products off our three websites, our three main websites, criticalhealthnews.com, brightsideben.com, and pharmacistben.com. Got blog posts, news stories, videos up on all up on our websites as well. Lots of good health information. It's all free. And you can always check out our archive pages if you miss programs or you want to review programs at benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. If you want to purchase longevity products, they're all available on our websites, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com, and brightsideben.com. Or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 8 Six six seven three five twenty four seventy. And if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, they're all up at truthtreatments.com. We also have a skin health blog at truthtreatments.com or Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Transdermal C Serum, and our Truth Omega 6 Healing Cream. Truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, so it's all about frequency, folks. It's all about vibration. I know we talk about nutrition. This is a nutritional program, and I'm a nutritionist, and I love working with nutrition, but at the most fundamental level, it's frequency. And just like foods have frequencies, and just like nutrients have frequencies, and just like diseases, and disease has its own frequency, health and wellness has its own frequency, pretty much everything has a frequency. Our emotions have frequencies. Our mental nature has a frequency, which is simply a a measurement of how fast energy, electrical energy, is turning on and off. Vitamins and minerals and the essential nutrients, the mighty 90 essential nutrients are, are vibratory phenomena and they work via vibration. And guess what drugs are in this model, by the way? If nutrients, if the mighty, the mighty 90 essential nutrients entrain the cells and tissues and organs of the body, they match the frequencies of, this, of the, the health of the cells and the organs and the structures of the body. What do you think drugs fit into this model? Do you think that drugs, pharmaceuticals, are the frequent, uh, contain the frequencies of health? Negative. In fact, in actuality, drugs are the frequency of death. Drugs are the frequency of disease, and we see this by something that is called side effects. A side effect is a measurement of how drugs decohere. They don't increase coherence, they increase incoherence in the body. That's what a side effect is, it's a measurement of incoherence. The very fact that uh, drugs cause side effects is proof positive that drugs decohere the body. They don't don't increase coherence, they decrease it, they uh, increase incoherence. For the most part, with the exception of uh, uh, pain relief and getting rid of an an infection, which is basically a killing process, no one feels better when they take a drug. You may get your pain relieved, uh, pain relieved, and it's not good to be in pain. And I'm a big believer in in pain relief, uh, in pain pills, even though they can be easily abused, obviously, and cause addiction and mess up your digestive system. But if somebody's in pain, they need a pain pill. I know I need one when I'm in pain. Depending on how severe the pain is, because you do have toxicity and side effects. But aside from pain relief. And aside from uh, killing infections, nobody gets better or feels better when they take a drug. And this is why in pharmacy school, one of the first things we learn, first semester in pharmacy school, is you've got to encourage your patients to be in compliance with their drugs. They have to comply. Why? Because patients don't like taking their drugs. The vast majority of patients stop taking their drugs. And this can be a problem if you're taking antibiotics because if you just take a partial dose of your antibiotics, bacteria can mutate and they can become resistant. So your pharmacist will always instruct you to make sure you take your complete dose of antibiotics. Your pharmacist and your doctor will always instruct you to keep taking your medicine because patients don't like taking their medicine because nobody feels better when they take their beta blocker. Nobody feels better when they take their calcium channel blocker or their blood thinner or their diuretic or their, or, or their OCD drug or whatever medicine they take. Patients notoriously don't like taking drugs, and that's because drugs decohere the body. Nutrients cohere the body. Nutrients improve coherence. Nutrients improve harmony. Nutrients improve the flow of energy. uh, uh, Drugs do the opposite. 
And that, in a nutshell, is the difference between drugs and uh, uh, drugs and uh, nutrition, the mighty 90 essential nutrients. I had a guy come to me, uh, I did a talk last week at the Longevity Convention. I'm sure some of you out there have been, were at the Longevity Convention. We had a great time. I did a couple talks, and a guy at the end of the talk came up to me, and he wanted to know, can we overdose on nutritional supplements? No. It's almost impossible. You've got to take ridiculous doses of it, and even then you'll just get a little sick if you swallow the whole bottle of something which is, you know, you have to be kind of crazy to do. But if you take them even reasonably, a reasonable a dose or even a reasonable overdose, you're not going to have a problem. Try, try taking a reasonable overdose of your blood thinner. Try taking a reasonable overdose of your, of your beta blocker. Do you take a little extra beta blocker, just a little bit extra tenormin or a little bit extra metoprolol or just a little bit extra of your Coumadin because you want to get better? No, you'll be in big trouble. Nutrients are what drugs dream they could be. When a drug goes to bed at night, it wishes it was vitamin C. It has a fantasy that it was vitamin C because nutrients don't have toxicity. Nutrients don't have side effects. That alone is all you need to tell your boneheaded medical professional who wants you to take poison. So doctors and pharmacists are always fretting and warning patients about compliance. You better stay on your drugs. You better make sure you're taking your drugs and don't stop taking your drugs. If you ever stop taking your drugs and you tell a pharmacist Ben told you to stop taking your drugs, which I would never tell anybody to do, by the way, you know what kind of trouble I could get into for that? Anyway, based on Dr. Horowitz's model that health is a frequency phenomena, we don't feel better when we take our beta blocker or a blood thinner because the frequency of the drug molecule is not in tune with the frequency of our cells. It's creating an incoherent energy, an incoherent flow in the body. Drug frequencies create incoherence, which is the electrical version, the electrical correlate of disease. So from a frequency perspective, drugs don't only, are, are not only not curative, that is, they don't cure disease, but from a frequency perspective, drugs are actually a cause of disease because drugs increase the incoherence of the body and disease's incoherence. Drugs increase the likelihood of disease. We call that side effects in the short term, but in the long term, it can f cause a full-blown disease, and it likely does. Now, why would drug companies and corporate interests in the health business want to encourage disease. Hmm, that's, some, that's food for thought right there. Follow the money, that's the answer. According to Dr. Horowitz, it's not just the health of the body that's affected by frequency, it's also the health of the mind. It's also the health of plants. He states that laughter, sighing, and yawning are also functions of healthy frequencies. He identifies, by the way, uh, the frequency of health at 520 hertz. A hertz is one frequency. A hertz is an oscillation. How fast something is turning uh, on and off one time is a hertz. So 520 hertz means something is turning on and off 520 times, 528 times. When something turns on and off 528 times, that, according to Dr. Horowitz, is the frequency of health. He also says it's the central frequency of the sun's energy, which is also very interesting. There was actually a guy named Dr. Raymond Reif. Some of you may have heard of Raymond Reif, who invented the Reif machine, which is a frequency healing device. And far from being quackery, this thing was used to treat cancer very, very effectively at the turn of the 20th century. Century. We'll talk about the Rife machine, we'll talk about Dr. Rife, we'll continue talking about coherence and incoherence and heart health on the bright side on our next episode. Next, uh, next segment, we'll take your phone calls. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back right after this. All right, we're back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We have fully open lines at 844-236-6010. That means no one's on hold, and we're just going to do news stories here and maybe get to some letters if we don't have any calls. But if you tried to call us in before, if you tried to call in before and didn't get through, uh, 844-236-6010 is our number, and you get, you get first in line if you call now, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program or beyond Tangy Tangerine, the new Cardio Beats product developed by my good friends and Jeep Javia, or the uh, Healthy Start Pack, or Ultimate Nightly Essence, or Ultimate Selenium, or Ultimate Niacin, they're all up at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com as well. 
You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for a one-time $25 fee. You can start yourself a business, enjoy all the tax benefits associated with having a longevity business, and earn thank you checks as well. Work out of your home if you're an entrepreneur. It's a great, great business opportunity. The longevity company is growing amazingly. There are over 3,000 people, around 3,000 people at the convention uh, this last week. It was a great time. If you haven't been to, if you're in Longevity, and you haven't been to a convention, or you're thinking about longevity, you haven't been to a convention. These are amazing, amazing four day, tr- uh, four day uh, uh, extravaganzas, classes, and you get to uh, learn all kinds of stuff about business building and self improvement. There's wonderful products. They're introducing new products. The country is growing. The company is growing by leaps and bounds. When I did my first longevity convention 19 years ago. There were uh, probably 100 people there, maybe 150 people there. The whole company was only 1,000 people. There were nearly 3,000 people at this convention in Dallas, and it was a great time. If you're in Longevity and you missed this one, don't miss the next one, which is going to be in San Diego. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number from the journal Science. This is July 21st edition. It's kind of a technical journal, but there's lots of good stuff in it. Uh, Can immune... Can immunotherapy treat neurodegeneration? Hmm, how do you like that? Turns out that Alzheimer's disease, as well as other brain health issues and neurological issues, may be a function of the immune system. Surprise, surprise. Folks, every disease is a function of the immune system because the immune system is our protective system. And when we're sick, it's either because the immune system is hyperactive or it's not active enough. There is no such thing as a chronic degenerative disease that not, is not linked to the immune system or, as the immune system shows up, as inflammation. All disease is about protection. We're in disease because we're protecting ourselves from something. Even the amyloid plaques, the so-called amyloid plaques, or the, the so-called cause, I should say, of Alzheimer's disease and dementia, the amyloid plaques, are a function of the immune system. Fibrosis is a function of the immune system. Alzheimer's disease is basically fibrosis of the brain, just like arthritis is fibrosis of the joints. Just like heart disease is fibrosis of the heart. It's all the same things. That's why I repeat myself all the time on this program. When I do my phone calls, I'm doing my presentations, I'm constantly repeating myself because it's all the same thing. Fibrosis, immunity, attack, protection, dis-ease, out of ease, out of coherence, it's all the same thing. Neurological issues and, and, and dementias are especially problematic because there's, there's no drugs for anything, really. There's no drugs that, are, that will cure anything, but it's blatantly obvious when it comes to Alzheimer's d- disease, dementias, Parkinson's disease, and other neurological health challenges. It's not even close. Even doctors will tell you there's nothing we could do. Maybe help your symptoms a little. There's no drugs for Alzheimer's disease. There's no drugs for dementias. These are inflammatory issues. These are immune issues. These are uh, health issues that are marked by fibrosis and first deterioration of the brain and the neurological tissue, then fibrosis. That's what amyloids are. They're fibers. Amyloidosis is fibrosis. Amyloid plaques in the brain are not a function of aluminum or fluoride for that matter. They're a function of a deteriorating brain. There may be things like aluminum that cause it, but we don't know necessarily. What we can tell you is the brain's deteriorating, and it shouldn't be a surprise. Look at how we eat. This is why they call uh, uh, Alzheimer's disease type 3 diabetes. This is why the relationship between the gut and the brain is so well elucidated. It's called the gut-brain axis. This is why people who have dementia and Alzheimer's disease, or even people who are just merely getting older, have higher levels of cortisol, higher levels of stress hormone, because as our lives go by, as we live our lives, more and more we're under stress. So what does that mean? That means we have so much power. While the medical model doesn't have any drugs, while the medical model doesn't have any surgeries that can deal with dementias or Parkinson's disease or or neurological diseases, we have the power through how we live our lives, through the foods we eat, through how we think, through how we feel, through nutritional supplementation, through exercise, through reducing and lowering cortisol, through strengthening the blood sugar response and improving insulin response, through eliminating problem foods. These are all the ways we have leverage points. That's what this is all about, folks. It's about leverage. I love the lever. That's my favorite invention. When you, when you ask people what the most important invention was, they will tell you uh, that the most important invention ever was the wheel. I'm telling you, in my opinion anyway, it's the lever. Because with a lever, a 
tiny little movement will get you great results. You can lift up a huge rock with a little stick if you have the right kind of leverage. That's what leverage is about. A little movement or a little action giving you a great effect. Our leverage points when it comes to health are not drugs. Our leverage points are not doctors. Our leverage points when it comes to health have nothing to do with the medical model. Zippo. Nothing. Our leverage points are all about uh, uh, how we live our lives, all about reducing stress, all about exercise, all about nutritional supplementation, and all about how we eat. Speaking of uh, the failure of the medical model, this is good. Check this out from the University of Virginia School of Medicine. Antibiotics found to weaken the immune response to disease. To disease, yet another reason to stay away from drugs. And I'm not, I'm not a, you know, I don't have necessarily a problem with antibiotics, or I should say as big a problem with antibiotics as I do with other drugs. There are times when an antibiotic can be life-saving. But overuse of antibiotics not only causes uh, antibiotic resistance, where bacteria uh, become resistant to antibiotics and then they don't work, but now, it fa as it turns out, antibiotics are found to weaken the immune response to disease. And if you're out there and you say, well, I don't take any, anti anti any antibiotics, guess again. Because if you're drinking water, you're drinking antibiotics. If you're eating fish, you're probably eating antibiotics. If you're drinking milk, you're probably drinking antibiotics or eating cheese for that matter or any dairy. If you're eating meat, same thing. Because antibiotics are given to animals liberally. It used to be, until very recently, you could just go to the local veterinary supply store and get antibiotics. You didn't even need a prescription for them. I think they changed that recently. Antibiotics, make no mistake about it, they're a huge, huge, huge problem. And I know that they're necessary, and I'm not Pollyannish about using antibiotics for infections. There are times when you need to use antibiotics, certainly. But you have to be incredibly careful. Now we know, at least according to this research from the University of Virginia School of Medicine, that antibiotics can weaken, not support, your immune system. What does that say about people who are on antibiotics for years? And there are still people who are on tetracycline and, and erythromycin for years, antibiotics. All right, let's get uh, one more here, and then we'll get to your calls. How physical exercise protects the heart. This is from... Uh, this is from uh, the Sao Paulo Research, Sao Paulo, Brazil Research Foundation. It turns out aerobic training facilitates the removal of dysfunctional cell parts from heart cells, dysfunctional mitochondria from, uh, from heart cells. The mitochondria are the fuel of the heart cells. It's the mitochondria that are so important, uh, play such an important role in the ketogenic diet. The mitochondria actually burn fat when you're on the ketogenic diet. When the mitochondria become dysfunctional, heart disease follows, and it turns out that exercise eliminates those dysfunctional and diseased mitochondria. All right, I'm Pharmacist Benny. 442366010 is our number. We'll be back Cancer right after. On the bright side, I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number. And uh, hang on. We'll, I just want to read one more story that I think is interesting here, and then we'll get to your call. So hang tight. Uh, this is from the Journal of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Energy-dense foods may increase cancer risk regardless of obesity status. This is so important because cancer is a high-energy state. It's when the body is just freaking out. It's moving really fast. Really, cells are moving super, super fast. And what this means is that the trick to preventing cancer, ideally, or dealing with it if you have it, is to calm everything down. I talked to a guy the other day, a couple day, uh, Saturday, at the convention, body racked with cancer. He looked pretty good, actually, but uh, seven years old, body racked with cancer. And I could tell by talking to him that he just was hyped up. He's one of those type A guys, moving really fast, thinking really fast, talking really fast. Almost like his, his demeanor, his manner was, a, was like the physical version or was the, uh, was the uh, uh, apparent version, the obvious version of what a cancer cell is. Moving really fast, chaotic, jumping from idea to idea really fast. So it makes perfect sense that energy-dense foods would increase cancer risk. Energy-dense foods are the way we eat, sugar foods. Why? Why do food processors, why are food processors obsessed with energy-dense foods? And sugar, of course, is the, the, uh, the densest form of energy and fat. 
Why are they obsessed with sugar-rich foods and fat-rich foods? Because people love them. Because our biology is wired to go for energy-dense foods. Because for eons, there weren't a lot of energy-dense foods around. So our ancestors were the descendants of ancestors who survived by honing in, by developing a sixth sense for energy-dense foods. So wherever there were energy-dense foods, our ancestors went for them, and we are their descendants. Today, we have energy-dense foods every 20 yards via vending machines and 7-Elevens and uh, uh, from candy and cakes and pastries. So energy-dense foods are basically sugar-rich foods. Now, on the other hand, nutrient-dense foods are distinct from energy-dense foods. Nutrients are what allow the body to use energy. This is the role of nutrients. They help the body use energy. They help the body access energy from foods. This is a very important distinction that most people don't make. Certain, even most nutritionists don't make this distinction, and that is between micro and macro. Micronutrition and macronutrition. Macronutrition is the nutrition of energy. Protein, fats, and carbohydrates are about energy. Micronutrition is, about, is the nutrition of energy usage. You need the micronutrients to take advantage of the macronutrients. You need the vitamins and the minerals to ta be able to use and process the energy. If you get the energy without the nutrients, you're in big trouble. So now the body has all of this energy. Now, for a short term, it will store the energy away as fat, but in the long term, it's going to affect the way cells work, and this is what ultimately what cancer is about. It's about too much uncontrolled energy in the cell. And a cancer cell itself is the manifestation of this kind of energy. So it makes perfect sense that energy-dense foods will increase your cancer risk, according to this article, regardless of obesity status. I, 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 I'd want to read that because I think it's so important, so I apologize for leaving you on hold. Time to hit our phones, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Robert in Colorado. Oh, shoot. Mm, sorry, Robert. I hit the wrong button, buddy. I guess we're not going to go to Robert, but Hank, if you call back Robert, uh, we'll get you first up. I apologize for that. All right. Uh, a couple more things here. If Robert uh, calls back, we'll get him up. Otherwise, we got nobody on, the, on hold, so uh, we'll just continue reading some news stories here. This is from the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center, published in the journal Diabetes. In a nutshell, walnuts activate the brain region involved in appetite control. This is a study done on how walnuts uh, uh, de uh, have an ability to decrease hunger. Now, we talked last week about how walnuts, or two weeks ago, about how walnuts improve the health of the digestive tract. Walnuts are a rich source of omega-3 fatty acids, so they're very important for brain health. They're also, they also have anti-inflammatory properties, but now it turns out that they have an ability to regulate appetite. Now, anything with fiber is going to decrease appetite, and this is one of the most important uses of fiber. So I'm always talking about grinding up flax seeds and grinding up chia seeds. Grinding up walnuts is a great way to do it, or just even eating walnuts is a great way to get fiber for filling you up and for, uh, for uh, filling up the stomach and, and uh, dec deep decreasing your appetite, but now it turns out that walnuts quell cravings neurologically. Walnuts have an ability to shut down cravings at the level of the brain. And guess what? That's where we eat from. Very rarely are our eating choices based on our stomach, but they're mostly based on our brain. Not only is our eating behavior associated with our brain, but also satiety is associated with our brain. And if you eat a food that that uh, increases or turns on satiety, i.e. satisfaction, you're going to eat less. Start your meals off with a couple handfuls of walnuts. Carry walnuts around with you in the middle of the day. They're incredible for snacking. Not only are they a great source of omega-3s, they're also a great source of potassium. They're also a great source of minerals. They're also a great source of fiber. They support gut health. They're some, uh, a great source of good fats for the brain. They're just an amazing, amazing power food. And of course, they're very, very delicious as well. I absolutely lo love walnuts. And, and by the way, it's not just walnuts, it's all nuts. Here's the thing about nuts though. Most of the, way, most of the nuts that we eat, especially if we're eating peanut butter and, and almond butter out of the jar, are processed nuts. They're roasted. And that is a problem. Roasted oils are not good. I always get into a little con controversy when I talk about oils, talk about coconut oil and talk about vegetable oils, and there was, is a role, in my opinion, some people disagree, but in my opinion, there is a very important role to be played, health role, to be played uh, by oils, and they can be very, imp uh, in my opinion, again, a very important part of good health. However, when oils are cooked or roasted or heated or processed in any way, they are most definitely not good. And that's the problem with nuts. 
nuts are typically roasted. So if you're going to eat your walnuts or your pistachios or your almonds to take advantage of their numerous health benefits, you've got to make sure that your walnuts and your almonds and your nuts in general, your pistachios, whatever kind of nuts you eat, you're eating, are not roasted. And this is, again, a distinction that's not made on the food pyramid and not made by many nutritionists. So people are out there eating nuts out of the out of the bin at the at the uh, supermarket and they don't realize that they're not health, not only not health foods they're actually unhealthy foods roasted nuts are not healthy foods pretty much period pretty much clear now you will get some protein there are some there is some nutritional value to these kinds of foods these kinds of nuts but as a net food roasted nuts are not health foods and by the way in the bins that are clear Light is also, just the light that's going through those plastic bins is also negatively affecting the fats in your nuts. So even if they're roasted but they're kept out of the shell and they're kept in a clear bin, again, their nutritional value is going to be somewhat compromised. Not as bad as the roasted ones. That, those are the real problematic ones. You don't want to roast oils. You don't want to roast nuts. You don't want to cook oils. That is where oils become problematic. The reason I'm such a big fan of coconut oil is because it's stable. You can heat it. Same with butter. Same with lard, same with chicken fat. All of these kinds of fats, animal fats, ironically, because those are the fats that the medical model just, just absolutely is apoplectic about. They go into seizures when they think about saturated fat. Your doctor does. Don't touch that saturated fat. Well, your doctor's not a biochemist or a chemist for that matter, and he doesn't understand, but now you do. You can tell him. You say, saturated fats, they don't really oxidize. They don't really go bad when you, when you cook them or heat them. You can cook and heat a saturated fat. It's stable. You don't want to overcook it, you don't want to burn it, but you can certainly cook it a lot more than you can cook a vegetable oil. That's the big problem, is cooking and heating the vegetable oil. So if you're going to do your vegetable oils, make sure you keep them in a the refrigerator, make sure they're fresh, and make sure you don't heat them. Use butter, or even better, use ghee, G-H-E-E, -E, which is clarified butter, or use coconut oil. And I like to mix coconut oil and butter together, and then you get the benefits of both. And the benefits of coconut oil for the brain, by the way, for Alzheimer's disease, are absolutely legendary. Coconut oil is a rich source of something called called MCTs, which we've talked about many times in this program. MCTs are an Alzheimer's disease patient's best friend. MCTs are a weightlifter's best friend. MCTs are a dieter's best friend because MCTs can be utilized for energy without being stored for fat, and MCTs can be used by the brain. And by the way, MCTs are majorly ketogenic, which is why ke uh, coconut oil should form the linchpin of the ketogenic diet, the high-fat uh, high moderate protein, low carb, low calorie diet. Remember that term, low calorie. The ketogenic diet is a starvation diet and low calorie. Uh, low calorie is actually the missing link in most people's ketogenic diet protocol. P the ketogenic diet is real easy. You know those ketogenic diet bars that everybody uses and ketogenic diet products? The reason why ketogenic bars are all over the place is because they're so easy to make because they're high, high fat. And you throw a little sweetener in there, and the combination of sweetener, whether it's something like stevia or sorbitol or, or, or a maltol or, or something that's non-caloric, the combination of a sweetener from fat is a sweetener with fat is absolutely unbelievably delicious. And so you can make all kinds of wonderful snack bars, ketogenic diet snack bars. But if you're not going low calorie and you're going ketogenic, you're not going to get the benefits of the ketogenic diet. You've got to be low calorie. I'm talking 1,200 to 1,500 calories for most people a day for the ketogenic diet. All right, that's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Thanks for listening, friends. We're, we'll be back at you tomorrow with more good health information. We'll talk more about heart health, and we'll talk about Dr. Raymond Reif, who has uh, had some interest, interesting things to say and some interesting inventions around frequency and electronics and cancer and other diseases. We'll do that tomorrow as we continue talking about coherence and heart health on The Bright Side. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.